Let's solve problem 6.61 for microelectronic circuits 8th edition by Cedrin Smith. So we have five circuits and we need to find values for the labeled node voltages and branch cards, assuming beta to be very high. I looked at this problem and I think if you can comfortably solve all five circuits, you basically have BJT's transistors mastered, at least from this chapter. So let's start with circuit A. Now, immediately, I'm going to identify that when beta is very high, so alpha is equal to beta divided by beta plus one. And when beta is really high, that means alpha converges to one. Also, IC is equal to alpha multiplied by the emitter current. And because alpha converges to one, that means IC is approximately the same as IE. And lastly, if IC and IE are the same, that means IB has to be zero. So we can use all this information to really help with the circuit analysis for this transistor. So let's take a look at the base. We have a PNP transistor. So that means the collector's on the top, the base is in the middle, and the emitter is on the bottom. It's a PNP because the arrow here is pointing out. So we can see here we're grounded and we have no current traveling across the base. That means that this resistor is doing nothing. If there's no current conducting, then there's no voltage to drop from that resistor. Now we also know for PMP transistors, the voltage drop between emitter and base is 0 0.7 volts. So therefore the value of V1 is going to be VB minus the absolute value of VEB. VB is grounded minus 0 0.7. So V1 is equal to negative 0 0.7 volts. OK, now let's look at V2. So how can we calculate V2? Well, we can see that the emitter current is equal to 0 0.5 milliamps on this current source. That means the collector current is also going to be 0 0.5 milliamps. So now we can say V2 is equal to 3 volts minus the collector current multiplied by the resistance, 3.6 kilo ohms. And I calculate 1.2 volts for V2. So that solves the circuit. Let's move on to circuit B. Let's move on to circuit B. So we're looking for this current and this voltage. Now, if I knew the emitter voltage, again, this is a PNP transistor, so we have collector, base, emitter. If I knew my voltage here at the emitter, I could solve for the current I4. Well, again, the emitter voltage will just be the base voltage multiplied by the absolute value of the voltage drop between emitter and base. We can see that the base is just grounded to zero volts. And we know this value is 0 0.7 volts. So we know the emitter voltage is negative 0 0.7 volts. So now I can use a little analysis to calculate that I4 should be equal to negative 0 0.7 volts minus negative 3 volts divided by 4.7 kilo ohms, and that is equal to 0 0.5 amps. Okay, now let's solve for V3. So this I4 is the emitter current, and we know since beta is very high, that also has to be the collector current. I don't know why I wrote amps, let me fix that. It should be milliamps, okay. So now we can solve for V3 equals 3 volts minus the collector current, 0 0.5 milliamps, multiplied by the resistance of 3.6 kilo ohms, and that is equal to 
1.2 volts. And that solves this circuit. Let's move on to part C. All right, let's solve circuit C. So here we basically want the, this is a PNP, right? So we have collector, base, and measure. So we basically want collector voltage, base voltage, and emitter voltage. Okay, so once again, because beta is very high, there's no base current, which means this resistor has no voltage drop because there's no current to cause a voltage drop. So therefore, V6 is equal to the base voltage, which is grounded at zero volts. Now VE is going to be equal to the base voltage minus VBE, which is 0.7 volts. So that gets us negative 0.7 volts, which is V5. So V5 is equal to negative 0.7 volts. Okay. Now I just need to find V7. I can find the current from the emitter, which will be the same as the current from the collector. Then I can solve for V7. The emitter current will be negative 0.7 volts minus negative 3 volts divided by 3.7 kilo ohms. Or, sorry, 4.7 kilo ohms. And that is equal to 0.5 milliamps. So that means that V7, the collector voltage, is equal to 3 volts minus the emitter current because that's the same as the collector current. So 0.5 milliamps. Multiply by the resistor, 3.6 kilo ohms. So I calculate V7 to once again be uh, 1.2 volts here. All right, let's move on to part D. Okay, let's work on circuit D. So we have an NPN transistor this time because the arrow is pointing in. So we have emitter base and collector and we're solving for essentially the emitter voltage and the collector voltage now notice we have the 0.75 volt source at the base we have this resistor here but still beta is very high so we're going to have zero current and no current means no voltage drop across this resistor which means we have 0.75 volts right at this transistor. So VB is equal to 0.75 volts. And now you can use that information to solve for VE, which is VA. So VE minus VB is equal to the voltage drop from E to B we know is 0.7 volts. So I can calculate VE equal to VB plus VEB, which is 0.75 volts plus 0.7 volts. Therefore, V8 will be equal to 1.45 volts. Now, I can use that to calculate my emitter current, which I know will be the same as my collector current, and I can use that to solve for V9. So my emitter current will be 3 volts minus 1.45 volts divided by 6.2 kilo ohms, and I calculate 0 0.25 milliamps. That is the same current along the collector wire, so therefore, if we travel up from the circuit, V9 will be equal to negative 3 volts plus the voltage drop across this resistor. So that would be the collector current, 0 0.25 milliamps, multiplied by 10 kilo ohms. And I get that V9 is equal to negative 0 0.5 volts. OK, let's move on to the last circuit. All right, let's do the last circuit E. This is the one that's a lot more involved in the last four. But given that data is very high, we can leverage an important piece of information. 
So we have an NPM transistor. That means we have emitter and base and collector down here. And where is the current from the base? It's going to be the wire directly connected to the transistor. Still, we know that because beta is very high, the base current needs to be zero. What that means is I only have one current traveling along this wire. So I can calculate that current, just say uh, IA, sure. IA is equal to 3 volts minus negative 3 volts divided by the series combination of the resistors, so 180 kilo ohms plus 300 kilo ohms, and that is equal to 0 0.0125 milliamps. I can use that information to calculate V10. So V10, if I travel, we can just travel down from the circuit. That would be 3 volts minus this current, 0 0.0125 milliamps, multiplied by the resistance, 180 kilo ohms. That is equal to 0 0.75 volts. So V10 is equal to 0 0.75 volts. And this is also equal to my base voltage. So I can use that information to calculate V11, because that's equal to my emitter voltage, which is equal to VB, plus the absolute value of voltage drop from E to B. So that's going to be 0 0.75 volts plus 0 0.7 volts, which is equal to 1.45 volts. So V11 is equal to 1.45 volts. Lastly, if I calculate my emitter current, I know that'll be the same value as the collector current, and then I can solve for V12. So the emitter current is going to be 3 volts minus V11, 1.45 volts. That decimal clear. Okay. 1.45 volts divided by the resistance, 6.2 kilo ohms. And that is equal to 0 0.2, 0 0.25 milliamps. Now I know that is the same value as my collector current. So I can lastly solve for V12. That's going to be equal to the travel up. That would be negative 3 plus the drop from the resistor, which is my collector current, 0 0.25 milliamps times the resistance, 10 kilo ohms. That will be negative 0 0.5 volts. And that solve the circuit. There we go. Thank you for watching my video. For any comments, questions, or video suggestions, feel free to contact me in the comment section or by email. Thank you and have a great day.